number of years ago, I went to a cowboy poetry reading contest, and one of the poems that was read was the one called A Chicken Outfit. It was read by this tall, lanky old cowboy, and I made a tape recording of it, and my tape was not a very good quality. So when I tried to transcribe it, uh, some of the words weren't coming through clear, but I did the best I could, and this is what this was it in essence, a chicken outfit. Maybe it was the supper. My wife's lasagna is great. It might have been the quantity, because I know I overate. It was just an average evening. I don't remember what was said. But from the warm fire, I got sleepy, and I tottered off to bed. And then I had this evil nightmare, this gruesome nightmare. It, it started off light enough, but I was sorting through my mailbag and all this official-looking stuff, and it seemed I had a letter from an uncle, a guy I'd never even spied. And this wealthy old uncle wanted to see me before he died. So I went down to see him, and I was shocked to learn he was already dead. But his lawyer told me that I had inherited his spread. Well, there was a thousand acres in it. And I thought, wow, this dream is great. I won't have to do no haying or farming, or I won't even need to irrigate down there. So I asked, well, what breeds are in this stock that, that uh, I would now be the boss? I figured Angus or Hereford or maybe Brahma Cross. And the lawyer said Rhode Island Red and Leghorn and some more. Well, I was puzzled because I had never heard of those cow breeds before. And then he told me they were chickens. Well, I knew that dream was bad because I had agreed to run the stock that my dear old uncle had. Well, it was ten straight days of sweaty work before I was content I made pastures and I worked bunches for my chicken management. And I did have some dandy horses, and I could ride and rope. I figured if I treated them chickens like two-legged cows, then surely I could cope. Because we all know the chickens are stupid. And I figured I could learn what they knew quick. And then... I'd show my nosy neighbors some fancy western chicken tricks. Well, I was checking my first egg pullets when I heard an awful squawk. And then I observed a nasty sight, my very first egg lock. Now, for you chicken raisers, this information I would beg. Just how do you keep the chick chain from slipping off the egg? I knew she was in trouble, so I was real gentle, don't you know? But was the egg delivered backwards? Gee, I really didn't know. So now I had the crippled first egg pullet. And that looks like it surely could hurt. Because when you sling a chicken by her hips, her little beak goes in the dirt. And then I figured I'd better cull some roosters, because I had some that were big and fat and slick. But when I went to measure scrotums, I didn't have much luck at that. But soon I had some chicken families, and it didn't seem so strange to bunch them up easy in the corner and cut them out to match my range. 
And all my hens had lots of babies. And that's handy thing, you know. That's true. <clears throat> because when you cut out chicks on horseback, you always stomp a few. Well, I did my best at cutting pears. I used up all my tricks. But when I finished working chickens, I had a lot of limpy chicks. There was this one poor little bugger. Gee, this is weird. I told my dog, get him. And poof, he disappeared. I took my few surviving limpies, and, and this is hard to tell. I took him to my nurse hen back in the home corral. And then I stretched out my old nurse hen. Boy, this is the pits. I fumbled there for hours trying to unplug her chicken tits. Now, when you rope and doctor chickens, I will share with you this trick. Pick strong and healthy chickens, because by the time they're roped, they're sick. And when you stretch and vaccinate them, if by now you haven't guessed, lots of foul-eyed, bad-clawed chickens died from being overstretched. And many a hapless chicken at my hand ran out of luck with both my feet on his little chicken chest trying to get my ball and gun unstuck. It seemed like every night we tried some new fantastic way to cook and eat the chickens that died from doctoring that day. Well, I soon grew despondent for the bad shape I was in, and each day I started guzzling a quart of chicken eater's gin. And then I missed a payment. And gosh, that was sad, because the Dreamland Bank foreclosed on the land of my uncle and dad. And, this, and though the sheriff was a Christian soul, he did give me quite a shock when he said that just the land was mortgaged and I would have to keep the stock. But I decided to leave that ranch and set them chickens free. And they could scrounge on open range and they wouldn't be a bother to me. So I loaded up my horses and coming home I spared no speed because I was sick of chicken problems and working for chicken feed. But now I am a wiser man, but humbled, that is true. And though I am pretty good at a lot of things, I was a darn punk chickaroo.